High light and low moisture tend to induce production of female flowers, while low light and high humidity produce male flowers. That is what some articles on the interwebs claim. Well, if there is one golden rule in the orchid hobby that we can all agree on, it would be there is no golden rule in the orchid hobby. It is with great pleasure that I can share the current blooming of my Orchid Glade Jack of Diamonds, which, when this happens, I will introduce to you as Jill of Diamonds, because after two years, we once again have female blooms with this catacetum. And this orchid was not short of moisture. Let me explain and show you these weird and funky looking blooms. Catacetum flowers are generally unisexual, so the plant tends to produce female flowers if grown in very bright light, or they will bloom the more attractive male flower if grown in lesser light. Although some flowers express a degree of hermaphroditism. Some growers speculate that cultural factors have more influence on the sex of the flowers than the light intensity. Given that only a very healthy and robust plant can carry the very large seed pods throughout the dormant period, only vigorous growers produce female flowers. Well, it is good to have you here. Thank you so much for your interest in this video. And having said all that, I would like to clear up what many articles have written about this phenomenal group of orchids. You see, this catacetum is grown in very high light from the moment the outdoor temperatures permit me to have the orchid outside day and night. Her placement is on the east side of the patio where she gets blasted with direct sun from morning until 3 p.m. when the sun is highest in the sky and then travels over the building. However, once the building has cast shade on this orchid, the high light changes into very bright shade because of the reflection of the white facade all around her. So far, that is conducive to getting female blooms. However, this orchid gets so much water, even though the pseudobulbs look as if they aren't getting enough. This orchid is not the kind to plump up pseudobulbs that shriveled a little during the dormant period, unfortunately. But if we were to go by the books, then we should not be able to see these blooms, seeing as I water and fertilize heavily during the growing season. In addition to that, I've had very low humidity in previous seasons, and this orchid still bloomed male blooms during the winter. Yes, this orchid blooms two times per year in my collection, when happy and doing well and not getting divided or repotted. She produces these female blooms first, and then she will grace us with male blooms several months later. And yes, the male blooms are the more attractive, the most desired, because they are the ones that have so much interest. They are large, colorful, expansive and expressive, and many, many times fragrant. The female blooms, on the other hand, look like they are a morning widow dressed in green, and they are so much more robust in their structure. I will show you what I mean in a minute. And you may have a totally different catacetum to mine, and yet your female blooms will look very similar to mine. Because of the marked differences between female and male blooms, here is a fun fact. In the early days, way back when, the researchers and botanists cataloged the same species as different species because the male and female blooms are so different, it would appear that they come from different orchids. Seeing as the orchid does not produce male and female spikes at the same time when looking at these, then if you did not know the orchid and you see it in bloom with male blooms, it is easy to understand the initial mess of the registration of the different species. When I first saw these blooms a couple of years ago, I had to chuckle every time. They might not be the prettiest, but you can't ignore the fact when looking at them, you have to ask yourself, why? Why do you look like this? I find them funny, ugly, cute, weird, outerwardly, alien, spooky, and many, many other things, but I have come to appreciate their uniqueness, and I'm happy to have this display to share with you. There is no fragrance at all, and what I have come to notice over the years is that even as the spike grows, it is a different animal to when I see this orchid growing a spike that will produce male blooms. The female spike comes out with a sense of purpose. It has this ominous look about it. There's nothing elegant about it at all. It is thick and tough as doornails. Feels like it is made out of steel. I snapped a male spike in my first year with this orchid. Well, the female spike is made of much tougher stuff, which then translates into the blooms. As mentioned, they are tough and hard, waxy to the touch. But listen to this. Can you hear it? That is the hood, as I call it. For a bloom, it is rock hard. And when the bud forms, that hood 
It cracks me up. It looks like a lima bean on steroids. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until the bloom opens. The petals and sepals give me the wives of the founding fathers vibe. I say Bo Beep, but in the case of these blooms, it would be Bo Beep's ugly sisters. But in order to put these blooms into context, the hood is the lip, much like our slipper orchids, and the bloom is upside down. Pollinating this orchid is extremely difficult. I thought about it, but it would entail waiting for the male blooms to catch the pollen, store it so that it stays viable, and then wait another eight months for another female spike to form to then pollinate the blooms, after which, if the procedure was successful, another 15 to 18 months of seed pod cultivation would be required. I would like to try, but before I do that, I would like my orchid to have at least five back bulbs to work with, seeing as the dormant period can be taxing, even without the orchid having to nurture a seed pod. I also want to mention one more thing, which I touched upon briefly at the beginning of this video, it is stated that only healthy and happy catacetinae will produce female spikes in private cultivation because the spikes are very demanding and require a lot of energy to actually form. But I think that there are catacetinae that are more prone to bloom female blooms than others. This being a primary hybrid probably has parents that are inclined to produce female blooms like clockwork. I don't grow either of those parents, so I wouldn't know. It is just an assumption. If you are in the know of the pileatum or the expansum and how they grow, how they behave, then I would appreciate it very much that you fill in the blanks to quench my curiosity in the comments. Thank you. And remember to give this video a like. I would appreciate that as well. These blooms have now been open a good week and they will be around for another week. After which they will turn a peachy color and eventually dry out, including spike and all. Not that long lasting, but for the sake of the orchid, I think nature has this dialed in very, very well. Two weeks is plenty of time to get pollinated. And if not, well then, we get a nice male blooming later several months down the line. Subscribe to the channel so that you're here for when that happens and please give this video a thumbs up. I don't see many female catacetiny blooms on the tubes, so it would be nice to get this video out to a wider audience. It also helps the video and channel to share it around. I appreciate the support very much, just as much as I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing these weird and wonderful jewel blooms of my Jack of Diamonds. <laughs> Have yourself a wonderful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.